So one thing I forgot to document. So on Friday I get a call, they let me know that my car's gonna be ready by the end of the day. I pay them an exorbitant amount of money and then they let me know that my car will be ready around 5.30. Problem was is I had to be at a wedding later that day so I couldn't pick up the car. And they're like, well, we're not open Saturday. And I didn't wanna wait till Monday to get my car. So we made arrangements for me to pick up my car at any point and they were gonna hide my key somewhere that only I knew. So I ended up at the shop to pick up my car around like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> it was after the wedding. Yeah, there was like a cop around. This business was closed. So I'm in a dark parking lot of a closed business. It looks super shady So I didn't want to like pull out my vlogging camera and be like I'm about to find where they hid my key and <laughs> Get in my car and drive away. So all that said I have a car That's just that's all I wanted to explain is how I have a car now So I figure I'd do this video in my car. We have some crazy news guys Let me just handle the old news first because a lot of y'all get your news from me for some reason So on June 15th Niantic announced global research Pokemon sightings and more coming during Pokemon Go Summer Tour 2018 So basically throughout the events of the Pokemon Go Summer Tour 2018 Professor Willow's global challenge Professor Willow needs your help on the weekend of our special live events Trainers from all over the world will be tasked to complete Professor Willow's global challenge The challenge is simple complete field research tasks for the purposes of this challenge the global community will be split into four parts the Americas Europe the Middle East and Africa the Asia Pacific region and the main research site itself Which are the events themselves go fast in the safari zones each area will have to complete a set number of field research tasks And the goals are met trainers everywhere will be able to enjoy some amazing bonuses There'll be three opportunities to complete these field research goals throughout the summer So get ready to work together at the end of each event if all goals are met for each area an even bigger bonus will be unlocked So stay tuned for more information on this exciting reward so in Dortmund, Germany safari zone attendance if you complete 100,000 research tasks, you are awarded extra catch XP. Europe, Middle East, and Africa complete 5 million research tasks, you get extra raid XP. Americas complete 5 million research tasks, extra hatch XP. Asia Pacific complete 5 million research tasks. Lucky eggs will last one hour. GoFest is Chicago, July 14th and 15th. GoFest attendees complete 100,000 research tasks, we get extra catch candy. Europe, Middle East, and Africa complete 5 million research tasks, you get extra hatch candy. Americas complete 5 million research tasks, reduced egg distance. Asia Pacific complete 5 million research tasks, extra rare candy. Candies from raids. Yokozuka Safari Zone late summer. We don't have a whole lot of details about the event, but we do know that if Safari Zone attendees complete 100,000 research tasks, you get extra catch Stardust. Europe, Middle East, and Africa, if you complete 5 million research tasks, star pieces last one hour. Americas complete 5 million research tasks, extra hatch Stardust. Asia Pacific complete 5 million research tasks, extra raid Stardust. So at Dortmund, Germany, during the Safari Zone at Westfallen Park, people are going to enjoy all the rare spawns and all the activities that are going to be going on at that free event. Around the world, though, we'll see increased appearance of the grass and poison type Pokemon originally discovered in the Hoenn region, Rosalia, along with a chance to catch a shiny Rosalia with purple flowers. During GoFest, Trapinch and Phoebus will be spawning more frequently around the world. Plus, Lenminen will also appear more frequently, and they will also award extra Stardust, along with the opportunity to catch their shiny forms. Also, during that weekend, the Alolan forms of Diglett and Geodude will also be launched. Don't know if they'll spawn as frequently as Alolan Executor did, but if they do, my gosh. Now, there's something at the bottom of the graphic that hints at ultra bonus unlock coming soon. This will probably be based on the world's performance as a whole throughout all these events. Maybe they'll let a regional loose throughout the world like they did last year with Farfetch'd. All right, now that I got that out of the way, this is the big thing, guys. Make way for friends trading and gifting in Pokemon Go. Trainers, we're excited to share brand new ways to interact with your friends in Pokemon Go. The friends feature will start rolling out to trainers later this week, allowing you to connect with your real life friends and keep track of their adventures in Pokemon Go. You'll be able to send them items, earn bonuses, and even trade Pokemon. In order to add a friend in Pokemon Go, you must first ask them to share their trainer code with you. To invite a trainer to become your friend, simply enter their trainer code and then send them a request. If they accept, you'll become friends, and you'll see them in your friends list. So your friends list looks like that. And you can see, according to this graphic, it looks like a mock-up, but it looks like you can see what the latest activity is for your friends. Like here it says, trainer caught a Pikachu two days ago. When you spin a photo disc at a Pokestop or gym, you have a chance of receiving a special gift. Although you can't open the gifts you receive from Pokestops, you can send them to a friend on your friend list. Inside the gift will be a stash of helpful items which your friend will receive, along with a postcard showing where you picked up your gift. Gifts can also include a special surprise, an egg that, when hatched, will contain an Alolan form of a Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region. But who knows what the frequency uh, the gifts are going to be. They might be as infrequent as evolution items, or they might be relatively frequent. Who knows? But that looks super cool. You know, it gives you a little postcard. I dig it. When 
when you send a gift to a friend or participate in a raid or gym battle with them, you can increase your friendship level. As your friendship level builds, you'll then unlock bonuses when you play together. For example, when you and a great friend participate in a gym battle or raid battle together, you can earn an attack bonus to give your Pokemon an edge. You can increase your friendship level once per day per friend. Good friend. Great friend. Ultra friend! Best friend. Best friend. So at good friend, it takes about one day you trade all Pokemon except Mythicals. Great Friend takes about seven days to get to that point. Trade all Pokemon except Mythicals, and there's a 1x discount on trading. We don't know what that number actually is. There's 1x attack bonus, 1x extra Premier Ball with that friend. Ultra Friend takes 30 days. Trade all Pokemon except Mythicals, you get a 2x discount on trading. You get 2x attack bonus, and you get two extra Premier Balls with that friend. Best Friend, 90 days! It takes 90 days to make a best friend. Trade all Pokemon except Mythicals. You get 3x discount on trading, 3x attack bonus, and plus 4 extra Premier Balls with that friend. You can also build your friendship level by trading Pokemon with a friend. If you're near a friend and have a trainer level of 10 or higher, you can trade Pokemon you've caught with that friend. Completing a trade earns a bonus candy for the Pokemon you've traded away, and that bonus can increase if the Pokemon you traded were caught in locations far apart from each other. So, like, if I'm giving you a Party Hat Pikachu, and I caught that Pikachu in New York City, for instance. And if you're trading me like a Pokemon you caught in like Australia, dude, like the bonus would be even greater. Here's the rub. All trades are powered by Stardust, and some trades require more Stardust than others. As you build your friendship level with the friends you're trading with, you'll find that you can complete the trade with much less Stardust. You trade with a friend only when you're near each other. The amount of Stardust needed to trade varies. Trades for certain Pokemon are called special trades and require more Stardust. You reduce the amount of Stardust required for special trades by increasing your friendship level. Legendary Pokemon, Shiny Pokemon, and Pokemon not currently in your Pokedex all require special trade. You can only make one special trade a day. You'll need to be within 100 meters of a friend to start a trade, you can earn a bonus depending on where the Pokemon in the trade were caught. The farther apart they're caught locations up to 100 kilometers, the more candy you'll earn. So it's only up to 100 kilometers, but still. When you trade a Pokemon to a friend, you can see the range of CP and HP that it could have. This range adjusts based on your friend's level and will also be affected by your friendship level. After you complete the trade, the stats of both Pokemon will change randomly to reflect the new range. So, if I trade you 100 IV Jinx, for instance, which I'm never trading, never trading my 100 IV Jinx, it won't be 100 IV when it gets to you. Certain Pokemon, such as legendary Pokemon, a shiny Pokemon, or Pokemon not currently in your Pokedex require a special trade to complete, so keep that in mind before trading away that golden Magikarp. Special trades can only occur once per day with a great friend or a best friend, so it has to be great or best. And it often requires a lot of Stardust to complete a special trade. Special trades are a great way to show a friend how much you care. So this is what the trade details would look like. So like, this trade between starters, it's like 100 Stardust, and the friendship level isn't very high. Then we, you go here. Friendship level's not very high, it's a good friend. It's showing one million Stardust between these legendary birds. That's absurd. But then here, you see that the friendship level's all the way up and it's only 40,000. So it's the same trade, substantially less. So friendship level does matter for sure. But also take it with a grain of salt because these could just be mock-ups. There was also a tweet posted, I'll find it by the time I edit this, that stated that there was only 200 friend seats available. So there's that, I don't know, no big deal. Anyway, what do y'all think about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm super stoked about it, man. I love the fact that you have to be in close proximity to each other and that the amount of stardust everything costs relies on being able to level up your friendship. So a lot of things that kind of like yeah, spoofers can kind of get around it and people can kind of game the system a little bit, but they're gonna have to put a lot of work into it. But you still gotta spend your hard-earned Stardust, which is awesome, I think. I think, sure, a million is a little steep, but not for this guy. <laughs> Plus, I'm not, I'm not giving up my Stardust for you guys. Sorry. We can level up our friendship. Maybe if we become best friends, yes, I'll, I'll do some of those trades, but not until I give all my Pokemon to Christine. <laughs> must be done <laughs> She'd probably prefer to catch them herself anyway, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys So if you're as stoked about loading up your friends list as I am make sure you hit that big thumbs up button Subscribe if you want to see more content like this hit that notification bell Otherwise you won't get notified if you want to engage a little deeper in this conversation Make sure you follow me on Twitter links in the description below and best of luck finding some real-life friends guys <laughs> I did not mean to end this on a burn. Good night